<laughs> Look at this soft toy! Isn't it so cute? But you know what's better and cuter? Seeing them in real life. Let's go! Hello, my little kitty kids. It's me, Kitty. K I D I. And today we're at the Twari Zoo. That's right. We're going to see so many animals that you might have at home as a soft toy. Wow. They have foxes here and uh, giraffes. Wow. Oh, also an elephant. Bears, they have bears too, and wolves, they have wolves, wow. We're gonna see so many animals today. You'll see, it's gonna be Bears. We've all heard about teddy bears. We even might have a teddy bear at home sitting on your bed. But actual bears are fierce creature. You wouldn't want to hug one in real life because they can be very dangerous. I mean, she doesn't look very dangerous, but trust me, she is. Bears are omnivorous. That means that they'll eat a bit of everything. Fruits, vegetables, meat and grains, nuts, you know. The interesting thing is that some bears are scavengers, so they will eat leftover meat from other hunts, while others are hunters. They will go and just hunt for themselves. They also have big claws to help them climb trees and big powerful jaws to rip away tree bark. Even though they are quite big, they are very, very nimble and their favorite treat is honey. That's right, honey, you know, from bees, sugary, nice. You put it in tea, it's nice. So, bears tend to sleep during the night and roam around during the day. They live in caves and tend to be loners. However, that changes when they want to have babies, also called bear cubs. A mother bear will have one to four babies every four years. Wow, and those babies will stay with the mother for about two years. over there is called the spectacled bear and that's because he has little white patches of white fur around his eyes which makes him look like he has glasses a bit like me so i'm a i'm a spectacled kitty but this guy over there lives in south america hello my little kitty kids it's me kitty and I'm with Simon. Hi, Simon. Hi, Katie. And Simon here can speak to red pandas and he's gonna get them really, really close to us. It's gonna be really cute, trust me. You can see over there a red panda. Red pandas are very unique. They have this odd body shape. Their front legs are shorter than their back legs, which allows them to climb down a tree head first. That's fascinating. They're the only creatures to actually do that. And they're not very big. As you can see them, they are cat-sized. Like really house cat. Not big, small. Red pandas come from China. Their home is in the highest mountain range in the world. That's right, I'm talking about the Himalayas. Woo wee! They really like a wooded environment, foresty type stuff. Really, they really, really like it. So they feel quite at home here in Tuari. 
That's cute. Look, the red panda. Ooh, hello. How are you? So, red pandas live in trees. They eat bamboo and small little animals, small critters if you want. They can have two to four babies a year. Sadly though, their population is getting smaller and smaller every year. That's so sad. Look at them, they're so cute. Oh yes, you're curious. Hello. Hello. Don't be fooled by their names. Even though they are called red pandas, they have nothing to do with the giant panda, you know, the white and black one. They are not related in any way. You may have heard stories of the cunning fox, this mean little fox who will steal from other people and especially play mean tricks on other animals. This is our local red fox, the one we have at home. The red fox has a cousin that lives way up in the north, up to the North Pole. I'm talking about the Arctic fox. These guys are incredibly cute. The Arctic fox has a unique feature for foxes. See, their coat will change depending on the season. In summer, they will have a darker, thinner coat, whilst in the winter, they will have a thicker, whiter coat. This is to help with the freezing temperature as... Hello there. Are you okay? <laughs> they have a thicker, whiter coat in the winter to help cope with the freezing temperature because it can drop to minus 45 degrees, isn't that right? While they sleep, in order to help their nose keep warm, they will use their tails as a scarf. Isn't that so cute? The Arctic fox family usually comes with five to seven cubs. That's five to seven little baby foxes. And when they are autonomous, that means that they can feed themselves, usually the mummy fox will leave the den and get on with her life, while the father will stay behind to make sure that the baby cubs will be, have a proper upbringing. Arctic foxes will eat small rodents most of the time, little animals, and they can hear them thanks to their ears from very far away and even when they are hiding in the snow. What they will usually do when they hear something in the snow is they will just make sure where it is and then it will just jump and dive in the snow. And luckily, he will catch it. The animals in the zoo are wild. That means that they're not domesticated, unlike the dogs, cats, or even hamsters you may have at home. However, they are medically trained. That means that, and I don't mean it in a way where they're doctors or nurses, no, no. I mean they are trained to know how to cooperate during medical examinations or procedures. They are being trained by the keepers at the moment at standing up on these little props so that they can take a look in their mouth to see if the teeth are okay and, you know, if they need braces, I guess. Hello, my little kitty kids. Today, I'm with Marion. Hi, Marion. Hi, kitty. Hi. And Marion will show me how to feed lemurs. Lemurs come from the island of Madagascar and they are little primates, so they have thumbs just like us. They also have a snout just like a fox. Isn't that true? Oh yes, you were hungry. You were very, very hungry. 
So, lemurs are actually vegetarians. They will only eat fruits and vegetables. Isn't that right? Yes, that's a healthy diet. That's a nice little. Look, they do little crunchy crunch. They also live in groups. Isn't that cute? Oh, no, no, no. And in groups, they communicate with cries. So that's right, they can communicate. And they just, you know, utter some little cries, like, well, like you've heard earlier. I'm not gonna try and do them because I don't want to scare them off. Mm -hmm.